Welcome to the Popish Plot. I'm Nate. And I'm Mike. It's Theology Thursday. And today's plot is... What is that? The hell? No, no, no. No, Mike. No, what? It's, it's just the hell. The hell? Uh, so, like... Are we going to take a road trip to hell, Michigan? No, 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 no. Well, that is a hell. But we're going to be talking about the hell. Oh, the definitive article. Yep. Yep. This is part of our, this, this is the final installment of our final four, the four last things. And one of the, 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 the only, one of the four last things that we haven't discussed is hell. With the fire and the brimstone and the wailing and the gnashing of teeth? Oh, oh sort of. See, in our world, in the, in the popular culture, there's a lot of misconceptions about hell, what it is, what it's there for, and why and how people end up there. Okay, so I think I get it. What we're going to be talking about is what the church teaches, what sacred scripture and sacred tradition tell us about what hell is and how people get there. Yes, that's it exactly. Huh. And what the church teaches us is that hell is a place for those who die in a state of mortal sin. Now, in the Bible, hell is often described as eternal fire, uh, the outer darkness, wailing and gnashing of teeth. Nasty business. But the primary punishment, but the, the catechism of the church teaches us that the primary punishment of hell is eternal separation from God. A separation from God. Yeah. Okay, like, I, I, can, I can understand eternal fire and wailing and gnashing of teeth, but what would separation from God even be like? All right, well, for a moment, let's consider heaven and earth. All right? right? Now, heaven, as we discussed in our previous episode, you can find a link right up here, yeah, heaven is a place of perfection. God's perfect presence, the light of God, um, perfect joy, perfect beauty, perfect fulfillment. Yeah, I know it's fantastic, right? But here on earth, we got a problem. Mm. We've got sin in the world. <coughs> and because of that sin, we have a, a sort of an imperfect presence of God. God is here. We can see the hand of God working in the world around us. Mm -hmm. But it's, the world is disordered. So we, we get some glimpses of God, we get some glimpses of things that aren't God. Okay. Okay? So now consider hell. If heaven is perfect, is the perfect presence of God. We see him as he is. We see him as he is. Earth is the imperfect presence of God. We can see his impact we can see him moving but we cannot really see him mm -hmm. consider a place where there is absolutely no presence of god if partial presence is partial disorder then no presence would be the absolutely perfect ultimate level of disorder so, you're talking like Dante's Inferno. Sure, sure, like Dante's Inferno. But Dante's Inferno is an artistic rendering. It was, it was something that he used allegorical, he used very descriptive terms and, and very, very picturesque words so that he could make people see it. But as far as the actual design of hell goes... No one really knows. I mean, there have been some people who have been who have been given through visions glimpses of hell, <sighs> but those were always a vision that was given to them to help them understand God's will for their life. So they're not actually going in and experiencing hell. They're just getting they're they're at the food court. And God gave them the, the little chicken sampler, you know, the little piece of chicken on the, on, on the toothpick. He said, here, try this. Just so that they got the flavor of it, if you will. So, there is this fire. Mm -hmm. Jesus sometimes talks, compares it to a 
a place that existed in Jerusalem, Gehenna. Yeah. And when we die in a state of mortal sin, it is to this eternal punishment and separation that God sends all sinners. Oh, not quite. Huh? But the, 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 the world always says, how can a loving God send people to hell? And see, that's... I can understand that point of view. Um, but it's really kind of one of the other misconceptions hmm. about hell. Uh, if you watched the episode that we did on judgment, well, we should have a link pop up here for you, um, you'll be reminded that in most cases, the judgment is in fact your own. Uh, you chose not to be with God, so therefore God reached a point where he let you have what you want. You don't want him in your world, so he's not going to make you have to live with him. Um, but, but Jesus speaks very clearly that the just will be to his right, the unjust will be to his left, You're separating the sheep from the goats. Yeah, and, and there, is, there is a judgment. We will all face it. Um, as we've discussed in previous episodes, we are going to later on do, epi do further episodes on the particular and the final judgment. This ju these judgments do occur. But the thing that we have to remember is, is that before judgment comes, mm -hmm. there's a life of sinfulness. Oh, yeah. Now, in order for a sin to be considered mortal... It requires a few things. The first and foremost of which is deliberate intent. You have to know that what you're doing is wrong, and you have to choose to do it anyway. When I look back on my life, I've seen a lot of times when I've known something was wrong. And you did, and you went and, and did it. And did it anyway. The next thing that is required is persistence. Not only do you have to choose to do the thing that you shouldn't do, to do the thing that is wrong, whether it is an act that you do or an act that you don't do that you should have, you have to choose to live in that sin. Um, you know, basically you have, to, you have to be willing to hold on to that sin for the rest of your life until the very end. It, once you repent, you can be forgiven, but in order for it to, in order for you to die in a state of sinfulness, you have to refuse that forgiveness. So what it sounds like you're saying is that God doesn't send people to hell. People choose to go there out of their affection for their persistence in whatever sin it is that separates them from God. And see, that's exactly it. That's the thing. The church teaches us that dying in a state of moral sin is in fact a state of definitive self-exclusion. It's not so much that God says, you're a bad person, you go to hell. It's more that you say, I'd rather go to hell than be with you. See, God's mercy is perfect. It's limitless. All that we would have to do is acknowledge that we did something wrong and seek that forgiveness. The world that we live in sees God as creating a set of rules that are hard, that are impossible to follow, uh, they're unreasonable, they're arbitrary, and then... For everybody who fails to follow these stupid rules, he sends them to hell. But the fact of the matter is, is that God is a good father. He creates guidelines for his children to follow so that they will live happy, healthy, fulfilled lives. He is a faithful friend. He will continue to remain, one, to remain your friend to the end. He will never turn his back on you. He does have expectations for how his friend should behave, but he won't betray he won't betray them. Every soul that is in hell 
is there because they willingly and willfully chose at some turn in their life and every turn from there on after to run away from that good father, from that faithful friend. They chose to the extent of not so much being sent to hell, but running to it as a refuge. That's, that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. I know, right? I mean, when you consider hell in the term, you know, we hear a lot in our world of people going out and speaking hellfire and damnation and how people are going to hell for living their lives the way they do. Those people do that without any love. If they really understood what hell is, how hell works, I think their message would be completely different. So everyone who's in hell has chosen to be there by persisting in their sin and even when Jesus extends his hand in friendship, when he takes their sin upon his perfect self and offers himself as a sacrifice, they still just refuse to accept his gift. And that's exactly it. Is it that is it that there's any sin that, that is just it's too much, that can't be forgiven? Well, there, there was one thing that was mentioned by Jesus in the Bible. Uh, I believe it was blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. But it was, that was never really all that clearly defined as to what it is, how one does it. Um, and, and there's a lot of discussion about that, and most of it points to the actual notion that refusing God's forgiveness would be the only sin that God would not be able to forgive. Like you said earlier, a definitive act of self-exclusion. Exactly. But no, there is nothing that you could have ever done that will make God, that will not, that will prevent God from looking upon you and saying, I forgive you. So now that you've learned a little bit more about hell, about the real nature of it, please join the discussion. Comment below about what misconceptions you've been taught about hell. What ideas you may still be holding that disagree with what we've said in this episode. We would love to have a discussion with you, not to try to scold you, not to try to browbeat you, to help you understand just how great God's mercy is. And at the same time, to see perhaps where you're coming from. Maybe there's something from your experience that we can take and add on to our own. So remember, go down below, hit the subscribe button so that you'll be able to find our, epi our future episodes and our past episodes more easily. Hit the bell right next to it so that way you can be notified when new ones come out. And please, hit the like button. It seems like a small act, but you have no idea how much one little like it does to encourage us to continue on in our mission of spreading God's word. And, and, and to continue bringing you more and even better content. And until next time, live your faith. Love your faith. Share that love.